guys, it's John again. Um, I hope you recognize this tree by now. Uh, this is the first tree that I carved and started training as a, as a flat top. Um, and this is going to be its third summer to have training on it. So it's actually the fourth year I've had it. I collected it in 2008, trained it in 2009, 2010, and now 2011. So I uh, did a training session on it. Um, what I'm going to focus on today is uh, I'm going to <coughs> uh, work on the transition between the branches and the trunk. Uh, this is my oldest one, and um, this is the one I've done had the longest. And uh, from this from this side, I'm really liking the way it's it's looking and healing here. Uh, the transition looks pretty good. Uh, from the other side. Um, from this side, I can see I need to carve out some more of the dead material here so that it's going to uh, heal over better. So it's just, I left it too thick to start with. I need to do that on both sides. So I don't think that'll take very long, but that'll be one of the processes today. The other thing I'm going to do, of course, is, is uh, defoliate and wire. So, um, the other thing I may do is try to decide on a front for this tree. Um, it's uh, where it sits in the pot, I'm not completely satisfied with. But after I completely work on it and wire it and uh, uh, get everything done that way, I'll look at the pot. And if I need to, to turn it in the pot some, I may, uh, I may do that. So. It's only been in this pot for one summer, or one year, excuse me, so it went in last summer. Um, but uh, anyhow, uh, I'm going to get to work. Okay guys, I have uh, um, done more work to this tree than I thought I would. Um, uh, I removed quite a bit of wood in here, but I think what this is going to do is this is going to help uh, the way it's carved now is going to help this roll more naturally inside to form uh, two um, uh, two, two branches basically going up. You know, when you do the subtraction method of bonsai, and that is you take um, you start with a trunk, um, you you start with a plant that's already grown a trunk, uh, and you reduce that plant to become a bonsai. You're always going to have a big cutback scar to deal with. So. There's lots of different ideas and whatnot, uh, uh, techniques for dealing with that. And um, uh, one of the things I want to show you today is how to help scars heal from year to year. One mistake I made with this is I did not re-wound this last year. Um, uh, there was a little bit of re-wounding done when I did when I did some wiring and carving, but but nothing like I should have. So. Um, you notice here when I carved it, I touched it a couple of times with the carver, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sharp knife uh, and I'm going to wound this entire edge. I'm going to make green show um, all the way up this edge here. <clears throat> By rewounding this, I'm telling the tree that it it needs to uh, uh, start callousing over some more um, and and continuing to heal this open spot. Um, what I'll do when I'm finished here is I will uh, cover this with cut paste. Um, I think it's a mistake not to use cut paste when you're looking to do specific types of healing things. Do all trees need cut paste? Maybe not, but uh, all wounds need cut paste, but in this situation where you're trying to do something specific, you don't want this wound to dry out. You want to keep it nice and wet so that it heals, um, heals well. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to go all the way around this tree now and wound the edge of where this is uh, trying to callus over or heal over. Okay, you can see we have a nice green stripe. There's one on this side here and all the way up over here. So now I'm just going to take a little bit of cut paste. Not a whole bunch. I don't have to cover the whole area. I'm just going to cover where I've wounded it. 